Beirut, summer 96, Hezbollah celebrates the funeral of 150 of its fighters, 150 bodies returned by Israel in exchange for those of two Israeli soldiers killed in southern Lebanon. An unbalanced exchange, just like the war that has been raging since 1984 between the Jewish state and the Party of God on the 850 square kilometers occupied by Israel within the Lebanese border. On one side, one of the best equipped armies in the world. On the other side, 3,000 regular fighters, 25,000 mobilized, armed with their religious faith, Kalashnikov and rocket launchers, sometimes homemade. At the head of Hezbollah, a 35-year-old man, father of five children, Sheikh Hassan Nasrallah. The Israeli enemy failed to defeat us, or even undermine our political or military institutions. Israel has also failed to create a rift between us and the population. On the contrary, everyone today agrees to say that we have grown in popularity. Last April, Hassan Abed lost his wife and six of his children under Israeli shells. He understands, without sharing it entirely, the sympathy that civilians express to Hezbollah. He has always forbidden his children to join the militias. For him, the fundamentalist organization popularity is due less to adherence to the Islamist thesis of the Party of God than to the revolt of the trapped civilians under Israeli bombardments. Without Israel, there would be no resistance in the country. By invading our villages in 1982, the Israelis at the same time caused our bankruptcy, sabotaged everything. And today, what are they still doing on our land? It is because of Israel that the resistance exists, even before Hezbollah was founded. Take, for example, what happened in Qayyum. At the time of Palestinian organizations, the inhabitants had fled the village. Only the old people remained. The Israelis grouped them in the square, then lined them up against a wall and machine gunned at close range. How do you expect people not to revolt? You think these old people didn't have children, grandchildren, loved ones who were mourning them? It is obvious to anyone who has lost a father, a son, a sister or a mother to join the resistance. Listen to these planes. What are they doing at this time? Look around you. Do you see any resistance men? No. So what are they doing here? These planes are theirs. Those are the Israeli fighter. What are they doing here at this moment? In response to the Israeli occupation, many young people are embarking on war. They adhere to this Islamic resistance, which today is practically the only force in Lebanon to oppose the IDF, the Israeli army. Entering the Islamic resistance is firstly to follow military training in a camp in the Baalbek region. This training camp is secret. Like others in the region, it's been installed and will be dismantled in a few hours so as not to be spotted by the Israeli Air Force. Both my beliefs and my patriotism prevent me from sitting idly by in the face of the occupation and the humiliation it inflicts on us. That's why I really wanted to fight with the help of Almighty God, of my faith and the means that I have been given. I went into the fight with all my might. Thanks to the faith that I have in God Almighty, I have no fear in combat, not even that of death. We're in love with martyrdom. After an intensive workout, these future martyrs return to civilian life in their village. Their affiliation with Hezbollah remains discreet. However, they can from one day to another be called upon to participate in an anti-Israel operation. Their mission accomplished, they will return home under the gaze of UNIFIL soldiers, supposed to serve as a buffer between Israeli occupying forces and combatants. Timur Goxel, the UNIFIL spokesperson, based in Lebanon for 20 years, admits his powerlessness to prevent the attacks. These people, These people live here. They are local residents. What can I tell them? Don't wander around your villages? They live here. They are the ones who could say to me, get out of here. 
Who are you to give us orders? So we're just trying to guess what their intentions are. If they are in possession of weapons, we tell them to leave to get away from this zone. And they do. But these Hezbollah are too smart to be detected by our men. We try to prevent the infiltration of heavy weapons. If we find them in the vehicles, we have a choice, confiscate them or turn away their owners outside the regions we control. Failing to change the course of the war, the 5,000 peacekeepers, including nearly 300 French people, provide humanitarian services to villagers. They secure as much as possible a population traditionally left behind by the Taliban. We are an element of stability in South Lebanon. I think we are able to prevent escalations of violence. Of course, from time to time, they do happen anyway, just like last April. But it's exceptional. Over the years, we have been really effective. Since 1978, Lebanon has renewed its request every six months to maintain the blue helmets in the south of the country, even if peacekeepers are only witnesses of this deadly showdown. In the mountains in front of us, you can see the Israeli positions. In the shadow of this Israeli position, there is Kana. Every day, dozens of people come to gather before the hundred graves of the victims of the Israeli fighter bombardment last April. Next door, the village Kafra, where Umatafa lives. She is called the mother of the two martyrs. When the Israelis arrived, I swear to you, my son, the martyr A.J. Mustafa, was 18 years old. There was no resistance yet. The Israeli army has invaded the region. It settled around here in the nearby village of Eris. Their patrol was moving forward on the road and started shooting on both sides of the path. They were shooting in bursts right and left. In bursts. If we stayed home, we were not at ease. If we were hiding in the basement, we were afraid that the walls and the house would collapse on us. All of this was before the resistance. They attacked us a lot, humiliated us. And thanks to God, their aggression has made us stronger. Imagine someone beating you in the head relentlessly. It's better to defend yourself, even if it means losing your life. Anyway, if I had hidden them at home, the danger would have been the same. So it was better to fight. My son, the martyr Ali, had been talking to his mother for three years to convince her to let him go to a training session in Baalbek. I didn't agree. I had already lost my eldest. All I had left was this son. I wanted to live peacefully, to see him grow up, become a young man. But his mother let him go without even letting me know. He went through a 45-day training session. Remember the Israeli raid on Kalkaba? My son had one last night to spend there. He was supposed to return home at dawn the next day. But Israel raided that night. I am the mother of two martyrs. I had no other boys. And believe me, if today I could follow a treatment to give birth to another boy, I would send him to fight with the resistance. I swear to God. I swear to God. And you see, all my grandchildren, my daughter's children, I raise them in the same spirit. Who is this gentleman? Answer. Who is it? Here is a letter of what I wanted to say to the leader of the resistance. I thank God for all that he has given me. And I swear by God that I write these words lucidly with all responsibility, with all determination. And I am volunteering to perform a suicide operation against an Israeli patrol and kill as many soldiers as possible. Sheikh Nasrallahan receives dozens of similar letters. For Hezbollah, dying as a martyr is the noblest death there is. 
In the afterlife, martyrdom has a privileged place. Indeed, we experience pain when one of our youngest dies. But we beatify him because he left for a better world. At least he went into a world where there was no war, no oppression, no fighting, no famine, no Shimon Perez, not Clinton. <laughs> The beatification of the martyr is the basis of Hezbollah culture. A unit of male suicides, composed of nearly 80 people, is ready to go blow herself up against Israeli patrols in the name of liberating Lebanese territory. They hope to acquire a privileged place in paradise. Masab, 29, is part of this suicide bomber unit. Our religion says, do not consider those who gave their lives for God dead, but be sure that they are alive, with their God, and well rewarded. It's not madness or nonsense. What would be stupid would be to let someone take over our land without reacting. Were Europeans called imbeciles when they fought the Nazis? I volunteered in this martyr's unit. Not having the military means to fight our Zionist enemy and the occupation of our land. We fight with what is within our reach. For example, I could very well be called upon to perform an operation against the Israeli defense minister. Yitzhak Mordecai, who regularly carries out inspections in the region not far from here. By blowing myself up against him, I hope to shock my enemy and accelerate his retreat. You see, they're very high-powered explosives. All I have to do is press there for my body to explode with all the nails and the loads I belted myself with. I wouldn't want to be the only one to die. If I kill ten of them with me, I will thank God. My parents don't know anything about my activities. They only know that I am away from home for varying lengths of time. I don't tell them anything. I would be too afraid that my mom would try to hold me back. In Baalbek, near the Roman ruins where Nureyev, Behar, and Rostropovich like to perform, Hezbollah parades every year on the day of Ashura. They commemorate the assassination of the Shiite Imam Hussein in Iraq during a battle against infidels. It is by wishing to follow the example of Hussein that the party of God calls on its own to give their lives for the cause. I said to myself, well, I'm going to follow these people, walk alongside them. With Hezbollah? Yes. Are you part of Hezbollah? We are all with Hezbollah. Year after year, there are more people. Those who march support the Islamic resistance. Tradition was that on Ashura. Men and boys slashed their heads with swords to spill blood and suffer, as Imam Hussein did. Now, bloody demonstrations are forbidden. Hezbollah doesn't want its image to be systematically associated with violence. The Israelis are anxious to give Hezbollah the image of a terrorist organization and not of resistance. They are trying to create problems for us with a number of countries. They say to the French, you want to set up in the region, but do you know that Hezbollah trains in its camps, Algerians and North Africans, to carry out attacks in Paris? They say to Europeans, look, Hezbollah has formed terrorist groups in your country to put your safety at risk. That's why, when I read that, we have six bases in South Africa, at least that's what the Israelis say, that we also have bases in Nigeria, in France, Argentina, Paraguay, Brazil, where else? And that we train everything that exists on earth as an Islamic organization. So now, really, I feel very important. <laughs>
Hezbollah refuses to be labeled as a terrorist movement. They show their desire to participate in Lebanese public life by posing as a political party like any other, with their organization chart, their representatives in the National Assembly, deputies who had a lot of trouble getting re-elected this summer, during the last legislative elections. Of the 12 fundamentalists elected in 1992, only half remain, it must be said that the Lebanese authorities used every means, electoral fraud included, to remove Islamists from the hemicycle. The Lebanese Prime Minister has never hidden his aversion to fundamentalist Islam. Deputy Mohamed Berjoyan paid the price. Why this denigration of all our martyrs? Why this belittling of all our sacrifices? This attitude of the Lebanese authorities was very clear during the exchange of bodies between the Israelis and our fighters in Kfar Tibnit. We didn't see any Lebanese officials receiving the remains of our martyrs and welcoming the prisoners who had been freed from Israeli jails. Mohammed Baydown, deputy, right hand of the head of the National Assembly. This man is one of Hezbollah's most ferocious enemies. All Lebanese distinguish between Hezbollah's military action and their political role. Militarily, Hezbollah, like other organizations elsewhere, carries out resistance operations against the Israeli occupier. Politically, Hezbollah is trying to make Iran's nest in the heart of the Middle East. And the Lebanese people totally refuse this. Lebanon and Syria have the same regional policy. Syria works on two axes, reactivate the peace process and unify the Arab position. The Iranians, for their part, boast of having succeeded to hinder the peace process, which is frankly not a service to the Arabs. Moreover, they think that the Arab position has no value, and all that will remain is ink on paper. Understandably, the rejection of Hezbollah is above all the expression of the refusal of any Iranian-style Islamic settlement the region. The ambition of any Islamic movement, as well as its doctrine and faith, is to consider that all the problems of society, whether economic, social, moral, cultural, can be resolved through the establishment of an Islamic state. I am not hiding from you that as an Islamic movement, it is our ambition and our credo. But for us, this Islamic state is only the means to establish justice not an end in itself. In this context, there is no question of imposing it by force. If the fundamentalist movement doesn't use force to convince its followers, they use all the means at their disposal by Iran to expand their influence and expand their audience. Starting with the Al Mana television channel, which is intended to be a general interest channel, but actually serving as voice to Islamic resistance. Since there are people who fight on the ground with their weapons, we are fighting with a camera. We look for the images to support our cause. We have to accept the sacrifices and we accept them. We have already lost two cameramen, two martyrs, when they were filming camera on the shoulder, the Israelis opened fire. Among the important events we filmed, there is the attack by Israeli tanks. We filmed this attack led by our men and the destruction of tanks. These images are very important for our audience. They prove the reality of our actions, while the Israelis are trying to hide them. MANA's audience is subject to our ability in entering these occupied regions to see what's going on there and how our heroes are fighting and inflicting losses on the Israelis. Shooting such images and disseminate them to the Lebanese and in the Arab world, that is the raison d'etre of our channel.
دفاعا عن بيوتنا واطفالنا ساهم بثمن رصاصة وكن شريكا للمقاومة هيئة دعم المقاومة الاسلامية Almana Television is also used as an advertising medium to the Islamic Resistance Support Committee, a committee that calls on the faithful every day to fill its coffers, as does the social affairs branch of Hezbollah as well. Our main source of funding is private donations. The second is donations from international organizations. The third source consists of donations from the Iranian people of the Islamic Republic of Iran. All this makes up a mass of very diverse, very varied gifts. Very. Very important donations, ranging from basic foodstuffs, to medications, to blankets, to household appliances, and all. With these revenues, Hezbollah is playing the social card, assistance particularly appreciated in Beirut's periphery, where nearly 600,000 people live in South Lebanon and Bika, mostly Shiites who fled their villages, too poor or too occupied. Here, drinking water is rationed, the electrical network damaged by years of war. Reconstruction, less enthusiastic than elsewhere. Hezbollah was not wrong by offering to modest families everything they need, hospital care, housing assistance, free schooling. We have created institutions for the protection of orphans, for the sponsorship of families of prisoners, of men who have been injured. Our social action had no political objectives at the beginning. We never thought of politically recovered the humanitarian aspect of our activities. Really, we never thought about it. Support is also provided by the Martyr Foundation, subsidized by Iran, for the orphans of Islamic resistance fighters killed in battle. Qasim lost his father two years ago, in an ambush set by an Israeli patrol. Qasim and his four sisters were taken care of by the foundation that promises to take care of them until the end of their higher education. I am not responsible for their schooling. All I know is that they live in the morning for school and they come back in the evening. They take care of everything, from clothes to school supplies. They ensure everything, absolutely everything. And that has been since my husband died. They were here for us, they took care of us. Morning has been easier to bear, even if the weight of absence still remains. If you ask one of my children, where is your dad? They will answer you, my father is a martyr. They all lived in that mindset. In my husband's time, they saw young people at home with guns. They saw their father in mesh and asked, where are you going dad? He would tell them, I'm going to fight Israel. I'll make sure that the Israelis don't come into our house during the night and kill us while we sleep. When you grow up, we'll do the same thing, you will be in the resistance. What does Hezbollah do? They're fighting Israel. And what do you want to be when you grow up? Becoming Hezbollah. Why? To fight Israel. Why do you want to fight Israel? Because they're not nice. They're not nice. Because they're not nice. Because they killed Dad? Yes. And the vicious cycle of violence continues carrying an entire generation of children in its wake born in the shadow of tanks, bombs, and Kalashnikovs. Children who have a choice to bury themselves as Hezbollah martyrs or live by raising the walls until a global solution is found in the Middle East. <laughs> 